My name's Logan Kohler. My name's Josephine Hovenden. My name is Carolee Anderton. Um, and we are, um, a disease that we have is human immunodeficiency virus, com more commonly known as HIV. And to start out, we just to do the morphology, just to get an idea of the structures that we're looking at with this virus, some of the distinguishing factors, this does have a viral envelope and its genome, it has two strands of RNA. Um, and these other ones we're looking at are glycoproteins, which help it specify which um, host cell it's going to attach itself to. It has a capsid, which protects the genome and it has uh, some enzymes that we'll discuss later that help with its reproduction. Um, and some of these attributes that we talked about, it has RNA as its genome, it has an envelope, and it uses reverse transcription for its reproduction. This classifies this virus as a retrovirus, um, but one thing that does differ from other retroviruses that this um, HIV is roughly a, a sphere, kind of a sphere shape. Um, the envelope that uh, you saw on the previous slide, um, that's gained from the host cells, uh, cell membranes. Um, and this is, plays a crucial role in making sure that um, it can attach when it's doing the, the membrane fusion. And the name retrovirus uh, is a class for viruses that um, talks about the reverse transcription, which transcription is usually the, the production of RNA from DNA. Um, but so what these viruses do is they use the RNA of their, of their genome to integrate it into the DNA of the host cell. Um, the glycoproteins and the envelope um, that was on the previous slide, that's crucial in the cell, uh, the cell membrane fusion. Um, the glycoproteins recognize the, 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 the proteins on the outside of the host cell. And since it has a, a, a cell membrane, it's able to fuse onto the um, outer wall of the cell. Um, and this also provides some camouflage for the, for the virus and the, the host to not be attacked by the, by the immune system. Um, with those, um, with the glycoproteins, um, it's very, it's specific on the cells that it attacks and with it being a human immunodeficiency virus, it, it mainly attaches itself to T cells, macrophages, um, and cells in the immune system. And there are the three, three main types of enzymes that, that help with the reproduction of this virus. Um, the reverse transcriptase, which, you know, to its name helps the reverse transcription process, and that's to fuse the RNA into the DNA of the host cell. And there's also integrase, which helps the reverse transcriptase um, fuse that DNA together. And once that process is done, there's also a, an enzyme called protease, and that helps replicate the virus after the, the DNA has been, been fused with the RNA. Now, along with the etiology that was discussed earlier, um, some specific traits of retrovirus make it extra complicated to treat and to um, try and come up with a, a treatment plan for it. Um, and with retrovirus, the reverse transcription process with reverse transcriptase is not very efficient in replicating a genome that's identical. And so what happens is mutation is very rapid um, so that makes it hard to come up with a treatment plan that um, where the virus can become resistant to treatment. And that, that's also an explanation of why um, long-term treatment is usually what happens when somebody becomes infected because they have to deal with a constantly mutating virus. So how is HIV spread? Um, since um, HIV has a really short lifespan when it's outside of the human body, um, without, without um, 
human cells, the virus can't survive. So HIV is transmitted through contact with blood, semen, preseminal fluid, rectal mucus, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. And so if any of those um, come in contact with a mucous membrane or damaged tissue, or to, if it's directly injected into the bloodstream, um, that person can become infected. So um, through the blood transmission, the most common is through sharing of needles, especially um, with sharing needles doing illegal drugs. Um, it's important to note that HIV can live up for up to 20, or excuse me, 42 days in a needle um, that has blood in it. Um, it's not very common, but it has happened um, through blood transfusion or organ transplants. Um, since everything's screened so well nowadays, um, that's extremely rare. Um, also, a risk for healthcare providers um, that they need to be aware of is an accidental stick of an infected HIV needle. Um, through um, sexual fluids, as another common way the HIV is transmitted, um, anal, vaginal, or oral sex with an infected person um, can um, transmit HIV. Um, also, a birth of a child um, can also infect that child um, if the mother is HIV positive. Um, breast milk is another way of transmission. Um, if an HIV mother, positive mother, breastfeeds her child, um, the child can, can become HIV positive. Um, they do have medications the mother can take and medications the baby can take if they do not live in an area where formula is available. So, trans, so HIV is not spread. Um, through, some people get concerned what they can do or they can't do with an HIV positive person. And it's important to know that HIV is not spread through tears, saliva, sweat, unless there is blood present in one of those fluids. So for example, um, if an HIV positive mother chewed up food for her baby, but she had um, mouth sores, then that um, baby could become infected with HIV because there was blood in that, in those, in that saliva. Um, it's also important to know that HIV is not spread through insect bites, vaccinations, or using common areas such as sharing toilet seats. So the reservoir um, of HIV is, um, humans are really the only reservoir unless we consider the origins of HIV. So um, pan troglodytes, troglodytes are a chimpanzee found in southern Cameroon in Africa. And scientists have detected um, the SIV, the simian immunodeficiency virus, antibodies and nucleic acids in fecal samples and have determined this species to be the origins of HIV-1. So the scientists concluded that pantroglodytes troglodytes are a natural reservoir of HIV-1, the most common form of HIV today. Also, the primate reservoir for HIV-2 has been identified as the Sudi mangabe found in coastal West Africa. So although um, these um, primates do not actually have HIV, they do have a virus similar enough to HIV that it can be, um, that it can adapt itself. So both of these um, viruses, both HIV-1 and 2, represent cross-species zoonotic infections. Both are believed to have cross-species through butchering and consumption of these primates. On several occasions, occasions the SIV virus adapted itself to its new human host and became HIV. So there are, there are three phases of HIV infection and the first phase is called the acute HIV infection and um, in the next slide I'll kind of talk about what to expect during that phase. The second is the chronic HIV infection and the last one is um, AIDS, the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So a normal person has about a thousand um, of the CD4 T helper cells in um, a cubic millimeter of blood. 
and um, we'll talk about what happens to those levels as the HIV infection progresses. So the first phase is the acute HIV infection or the primary infection. And this phase um, lasts a few weeks up to a few months. And during this phase, the HIV virus multiplies rapidly and it spreads throughout the entire body, attacking and destroying those CD4 cells. The level of HIV is very high in the blood during this phase, and it is a high, <coughs> excuse me, there's a high risk of transmission during this phase. Those levels drop. <coughs> Those um, CD4 levels drop 200 to 300 cells from normal <coughs> during this acute phase. A person may experience symptoms and they may not. About 10 to 50 percent of individuals have no symptoms during this period. The symptoms that are common, <coughs> excuse me, are flu-like symptoms, so fevers, chills, night sweats, muscle aches, sore throats, fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, headaches. So you, as you can see, a person may not even know that they are, um, have become infected with HIV because you know, these are common things that a person might experience with any other viral infection. And they might also experience mouth ulcers or a rash. Um, so that first phase lasts um, for a few weeks to a few months and then those symptoms will subside and they will move into the chronic HIV infection or it's also called the latent phase. Um, the second phase is sometimes also referred to as asymptomatic HIV infection. Um, the symptoms will be mild or often non-existent during this phase. So those CD4 levels stabilize and they slowly decrease <coughs> about 50 to 90 cells per year, depending on the treatment they receive and their age and their health. <coughs> Without treatment, this phase can last an average of 10, of 8 to 10 years. And with treatment, um, a person can remain in this phase for, for decades. <coughs> I'm sorry. So toward the end of this latent phase, pre previous symptoms can return. They may de develop mild infections or chronic symptoms. So those same flu-like symptoms they experience during the acute phase can return. Um, they might experience weight loss, oral thrush, shingles. So they'll be more susceptible to fungal infections or other um, viral infections during this time. The last, the last phase of HIV infection is when a person moves into the AIDS um, syndrome, so the Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So this is diagnosed once those CD4 levels drop below 200 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. So um, if you remember, we were up over 1,000 to start with in a healthy person, and now um, they, they have a significantly decrease of those, um, those CD4 T helper cells. Or um, also if a person has another AIDS-defining complication, um, they may be diagnosed with AIDS at this point, even if those cell numbers have not dropped below 200. So opportunistic infections are common at this phase since the immune system is extremely weakened. And um, at the bottom of the slide, you can see the common opportunistic infections. So tuberculosis is the leading cause of death um, um, worldwide for people who have AIDS. Also, I'm not sure how to get rid of this bar. Um, the cytomegalovirus and the candidiasis, the cryptococcal meningitis, toxoplasmosis, and the cryptosporidosis um, are common um, opportunistic infections a person with AIDS may experience. Um, common signs and symptoms during this phase is rapid weight loss or wasting disease. And wasting disease is um, defined as losing more than 10% of, of your body weight, especially if you lose um, muscle. Recurring fever or soaking night sweats, extreme fatigue, prolonged swelling of the lymph glands in the armpit, groin, or neck, diarrhea that lasts for more than a month, sores of the mouth, anus, and genitals, fungal and viral infections, pneumonia, 
memory loss, depression, and other neurological disorders. And um, if any person with AIDS um, or HIV um, shows one of these cancers, then that's one, um, one thing that can define this, them as having AIDS. So the Kaposi sarcoma is a cancer of the lymph nodes or the vessels, blood vessels cells. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or cervical cancer are all considered AIDS-defining cancers. As I said before, um, needles are a big way that HIV is spread. So if you are around needles or if you somehow get into doing drugs, don't share needles and don't be around contaminated needles. If you are later going to work in a hospital, make sure that hospital, I mean, the needles are put away properly and disposed of properly so that way you are not exposing yourself. Um, and if you are to use needles, whether for a medical use or for something not as conventional, make sure that you use sterile needles and you know that they are sterile before use. Um, also because sex is one of the main ways you can get HIV, practice safe sex. Use condoms while having sex if you're unsure if the person in which you're having intercourse with has HIV. Um, the other way one can get HIV, one of the main ways, is through mother-to-child transmission. Um, and as I said before, this is when a woman with HIV is pregnant, um, she can transmit um, HIV to her child through her fluids. Um, and this is why it's pertinent that for women who have HIV to be treated. Um, treatment. There are no treatments for HIV. I mean, there's no, um, sorry, there's no cure that exists for HIV or AIDS. Um, but if you follow a strict adherence to antiretroviral regimens, ARVs, um, it can dramatically slow the disease progress as well as prevent secondary infections and complications. Um, an ARV is an antiretro, are antiretrovirals. Um, one of them that's very common is pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP. Um, it is a way for people who do not have HIV but who are at a substantial risk for getting it to prevent HIV infection by taking a pill every day. The pill, um, the brand name, which is most commonly used, is Chuvada. Um, it contains two medicines, Tenovovir and um, Emetric I never figured out how to say that one. And these are used in combinations with other medications, other, me other medicines to treat HIV. Um, and tenofovir is a type of antiretroviral, and the other one is also an antiviral. And they both kind of do the same thing, but they attack different parts of the HIV. Um, treatments continued. Um, PEP, which is post-exposure, prophylaxis. Um, it's taking the antiretroviral medicines after potentially being exposed and it is um, crucial that they are taken within the first 72 hours of when the person was exposed and then for 28 days after according to prescription directions and this helps um, with mutations making sure that HIV doesn't mutate and just kind of controlling it before it becomes worse. And then prevention to mother, mother to child transmission of HIV. Women with HIV um, take HIV medicines during pregnancy and childbirth to reduce, reduce the risk of passing HIV to their babies. Like I said before, if a newborn is born with HIV, they will also need to start taking, um, if that was passed from mother to child, they will need to start taking um, antiretrovirals as well. Um, newborn, yeah, and they receive it four to six weeks, babies will receive it four to six weeks after birth. Um, the HIV medicines reduce the, the risk of infection from any HIV that may have entered the baby's body during childbirth. So no, there is no cure to HIV and AIDS, but there are ways, like Cara said, that it will be prevented, it will stop from being lethal, and people can live for decades on these um, antiretroviral medicines and it can help maintain it but it won't ever get rid of it per se. The, you always have that HIV or AIDS 
it is something that you will always have affecting you. And then this is just our references.